Hey everyone, in the past couple of weeks, I've been invited to do quite a few interviews lately, uh, mostly about kind of my history with this YouTube channel, how it all started, and how I balance the full-time content creation or being a influencer or whatever, uh, while also having a full-time job and maintaining a, a healthy family life, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I wanted to take a couple minutes or a little bit of time to talk about some of these topics and also some other questions that got submitted, mainly in the area of career advice from folks that are just looking to try and build themselves up and get a little bit better at cloud development and just tech in general. Um, so we're going to answer like four or five different questions here that were submitted by folks. So that's the intention of this video. So hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight into how I balance these things and how I kind of maintain a, a healthy lifestyle. So the first question is, how did you start this initiative and what motivates you to continue creating educational content? So I started this YouTube channel, I want to say in about 2019. And I knew that I, I wanted to start a YouTube channel. I just didn't know what the topic was about. I'd watched a video from another content creator talking about kind of the benefits of having a YouTube channel. And I thought that I wanted to do something creative. This was just before COVID started. Uh, so I decided I wanted to do something. And um, it wasn't clear to me that AWS would be the topic initially. Initially, my topic idea was houseplants because I was very um, kind of interested in houseplants. I have one behind me, as you can see. That's a fake one. All of my houseplants died. I used to collect some like very rare and exotic houseplants, but they all ended up dying. So I gave up that habit or that hobby rather. And so I was looking for a uh, topic idea for a YouTube channel for a really long time. And uh, one day at work, uh, I was talking to a coworker of mine and I got like the same question asked to me about three or four times about the exact same thing. It was about setting up cross SNS and SQS subscriptions on different AWS accounts. And I kept on getting asked this and I was, I asked myself, like, why is everyone having trouble with this? What's the, what's the gap here? And so I started looking at some of the AWS documentation that existed out there for this particular topic. And then I realized that the documentation itself, at least at the time, this was way back in like 2019, uh, wasn't the greatest in terms of kind of teaching you what you need to know. It was very verbose. It gave you a lot of detail that wasn't really necessary. Uh, and there weren't a lot of YouTube creators making stuff on AWS at the time. There's probably just a handful of people uh, and the quality wasn't that great. So I'm like, huh, this is an interesting idea. Um, I'm already passionate about this. I work with AWS every day. I already know a lot about it. And then I um, decided, you know, this is a great idea. I think there's like a real niche market here and let's just see how it goes. And so my story is a little bit different um, because most people will create a YouTube channel and it won't go anywhere for a really long time. Uh, mine did that as well, but I kind of got like a little bit of a head start. So my first kind of couple months, I want to say, of making the content, like I didn't really get a whole lot of views. I had like one post that I did on, on Hacker News at the time that um, got some eyes on it. So it got me an initial bunch of subscribers. Uh, and you can go check out my old videos. Like they were terrible. The content was good, but you know, the, 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 um, me, my speaking style, I, I was saying ums and uhs, like constantly, almost every other word, very odd to be on camera and then listen to your own voice afterwards. But as you can see, I've gotten a little bit better at it. Uh, but anyways, so I started creating all these different videos. I was doing like one or two a week. Uh, and then I got really lucky. Uh, I got one of my videos that was on step functions or something like that, got retweeted by Jeff Barr, who is the VP at Amazon of, um, I can't remember the term, but there, there's a, he's got a particular role. Go check him out on LinkedIn. But this guy is a uh, developer advocacy. That's what it is, developer advocacy. Uh, so he's the VP of that or something along those lines. And so he retweeted one of my videos and I got like a whole bunch of subscribers. So I was really, really happy. And that kind of like jump started things. Um, so that's kind of like how it started. And then over time, I've just been like really consistent because I get a lot of kind of joy out of doing this. Um, initially, all the videos that I made were mostly about topics that I already knew about because I was working with AWS for so long. Uh, so it was pretty easy for me to make content. It was just like drawing stuff out of my head and then finding some supplemental information on the internet and then just putting it all together. Um, what you'll find very quickly is that you, you tend to exhaust all of your ideas so that um, you need to start going and learning topics deliberately in order to create a YouTube video on it. So obviously that takes a little bit longer, well, a lot longer because it's a brand new topic. And then you need to think about how am I gonna explain this to someone that doesn't know anything about what I'm talking about here? And how am I gonna be confident that what I'm saying is actually correct? Like you need to have a certain quality bar so you're not spitting out uh, incorrect information. 
So that's a, another kind of difficulty that came into this. Um, so that's kind of how I got started and just kind of been consistent over time and uh, learned a lot about YouTube in the process. Um, so that's kind of my journey. And uh, the second kind of side part of this question is how do you keep up with the fast paced changes in the AWS ecosystem? And so this question is interesting because um, I use a bunch of different approaches that kind of are all over the map. Um, so I like to read the AWS subreddit mostly. Um, that gives you a lot of discussions about some interesting problems that people are facing in AWS and kind of a, a collection of people that are all interested in AWS. Um, so I usually just like filter to the top for the past posts that are the most popular for the week or the month, depending on how often I look at it. I'm trying to get away from looking at all this social media stuff really often because I find that just making it hard to focus and concentrate on my day job. You'll know that I talked about this idea where, you know, I don't want to be distracted. I want to kind of focus on topics very, very thoroughly. So it's deep work by Cal Newport. This is probably, yeah, okay. It looks right on camera. Uh, highly suggested book. So uh, I'm a little bit cautious about staying on on Reddit, but you're just being deliberate with it and making sure that you're not going down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, constantly looking at stuff is important. So that's one way that I stay up to date. I also look at the AWS. US blog posts pretty regularly to see the most updated ones. I'm subscribed to their RSS feed, so I do take a look pretty often. Um, another way is like, I'm just constantly talking to people at work too. Like what are the developments? You're talking to other people that are also into it. So this information just kind of comes out um, and you know, reInvent is coming up this year. So obviously that's something to stay in touch with every year just because that's when the major announcements happen. Uh, so that's another way that I stay up to date with all these different things that are going on. Um, so I already talked about how I started this initiative, but the next question is along the lines of uh, what motivates me to continue creating educational content? So this question um, is an important one because, you know, you can just look at this at face value and say like, sure, this guy makes YouTube videos and, um, you know, a lot of people watch them, whatever. But there's so much other benefits that come out of doing something like this. My communication skills have really, really improved since I started doing this. Um, I'm able to really think about, like take a complex, abstract, technical problem or technical topic and really boil it down to the fundamental principles because that's what you have to do to make a good YouTube video, right? You need to take a hard thing and ask yourself, how can I explain this to a person that doesn't know anything about what I'm saying in a way that they'll get it, that they'll understand pretty much right away. So using examples and like boiling these topics down to first principles, it's, it's practice, right? You get better at this over time and then it's transferable skills to other parts of your life, whether that be you know, writing a document for a presentation for, you know, your manager um, or, you know, doing a presentation for a talk that you're going to do in a public event. These are skills that can apply in many different areas. So it's definitely, definitely helped. Um, and that kind of keeps me motivated as well, because I know that I'm constantly improving and it's neat to see kind of how far I've come. If you go and watch the old videos of my channel and just check them out, they're kind of terrible in terms of my um, speaking and communication and just the content in general is just kind of whipped together without really much thought but things have obviously progressed and I'm I've become much better at it so it's become a passion of mine uh, kind of part of my identity so it's just something that uh, I think if you stick with it long enough it'll become something that you truly care about and that's what it is for me I love teaching people uh, I have like this deep desire like buried desire to bu to become some kind of educator at some point in my life um, whether that be through this channel or through like some career path I don't know what that looks like but I'm suppressing that for now but who knows where I'll go but I really just love helping people and I don't know when I was even in the office just you know, even to this day, I love just like, you know, grabbing a chair, seeing what someone is doing. Someone's having a problem, just like talking them through it, asking them leading questions, even if I know the answer to not really give it away. It's really rewarding to just help people and see how they improve and how they grow. And honestly, that's a lot of what keeps me going as well. Like I know that on YouTube, it's kind of like a one way conversation. You're just consuming it and I'm talking. But when I transfer that to real life, it's really, really rewarding, too. Um, so some of the skills that I learned via what I do via YouTube is directly helping me in my day to day career and in the face to face conversations with some of my peers. So the next question is, how do you balance the demands of your job with creating quality content? Um, so this is an interesting one because my strategy has shifted over time compared to when I originally started to today. 
And it's really uh, getting more difficult, especially because I just had a daughter. So my life is changing. I'm a, I'm a father now. So it's becoming much more difficult. So I have to be much more careful in terms of how I spend my time. But anyways, back to the question. Um, I used to, in the past, when I first started, I would create a video and basically publish it right away. And um, it creates this sense of burnout or like, it takes the fun out of it when you do that, I think. I truly believe that like YouTube rewards consistency. And if you talk to some other YouTubers, like you will very quickly see that consistency is extremely important for it to continue pushing your content out. So even if you have like two or three videos that are ready, like you shouldn't necessarily publish them all at once. You should space them out so that you're basically telling YouTube that I'm consistent, like I'm continued to be invested in this. You should keep on suggesting my content to other users or to other viewers. And so initially, Initially, I didn't do this at all. So I would just like make a video and then publish it right away. And, you know, I, like every Monday or sorry, every Sunday, I would be like, oh, shoot, I need to make a video for Monday because Monday is always when I publish or when I m mostly publish. And so if I didn't have one that was already ready or almost done, I'd be freaking out. It's like, okay, now I need to put together a really fast video. What's it going to be about? And when you rush yourself, the content sucks. So, um, that was what not to do. <laughs> so don't do that if you're starting with like a blog or YouTube or whatever it may be where you're publishing content. You want to be much more strategic about this. Um, so for me personally, there's there's parts of my life where I get in the mood where like I really want to create a bunch of videos. And what I'm what I'm doing on the side is that I'm constantly tallying up ideas. Like I have a, a notepad or a notebook where I constantly write down ideas as things pop into my head. Like when I'm doing something at work or when I'm reading a blog post, I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, I should maybe pocket that so later I can make a video on it. And so what I do is that every kind of weekend, usually I reserve some time. Um, I'll try to make like one or more videos when I get in this particular creation mode. And so what that allows me to do is over time create a bank of videos. I'm not publishing all the videos that I create right away, but what I do is create like kind of a, a repository of them that are all ready to go, thumbnails created, everything is done, but I kind of have a backlog of videos that are ready for whenever I need them. And if I know that in my life I'm going to be really, really busy, maybe because it's something that is going on at work, I need to do this big presentation or write this document, I can rely on all those videos. So leading up to me knowing that I'm going to be busy, I'll spend a couple weeks, weekends rather, or a couple days making a whole bunch of content. So I'll, I'll maybe have like six videos, which is one video a week. So one and a half months worth of content that's just saved up. And then over the next couple weeks, I'll publish them and I won't necessarily refill that backlog until my life settles down a bit. So that's how I kind of absorb the like waves in my life that come from, you know, being busy at work, being busy with some of your personal obligations or like going on vacation and not feeling like you have to make a ton of content or think about this. I'm able to absorb those kind of shocks in the system pretty intuitively. And this system has worked really, really well for me. And it just kind of helps me maintain a balanced lifestyle. So, so that's how I do it. If you were ever wondering, um, that's why you'll sometimes see that I don't make videos um, necessarily that are always completely up to date with what's going on in the AWS land, just because, you know, they, they usually get added to a queue. Um, so that's how I, I keep up and how I do this. And another thing to keep in mind too, is that I guess my, my life is change to a point where I'm constantly thinking about this stuff. So it just, like I said, it's kind of part of my identity. So this is just what I do. I constantly think about what's my next video. How do I explain this? So that by the time I hit the computer, I already have a bunch of ideas in my head on how I want to portray this. Uh, so I go for like productive walks where I take a topic and I'm like, how do I, how do I present this? Or how do I boil out the, the first principles here that I need to explain? Or what's the method I'm going to use to explain this topic? So that's what I do with my spare time. Time. So it's always running in the back of my mind. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. Um, so I think that answers that question. Um, the other one is kind of more career and um, just cloud related. Um, so this one is what's the one piece of advice you wish someone had given you when you started? Uh, I assume this question means when I started like YouTube or my tech career. I'm not sure what that is, uh, but let's just interpret this by maybe saying like my tech career or like learning cloud, maybe both. I'll tackle both of those things. So I think one important piece of advice that I've learned is to always be hungry and always be learning. And when you're in situations where you find yourself that you're not learning anymore, then it's probably time for a change. Um, I always feel like if you're not constantly improving yourself, 
then what's the point? Like you're just going to be in, in stasis and not really getting anywhere in your career, but also in terms of like personal satisfaction. Like if I'm not getting better at something, then what's the point, right? Uh, so I always tell people, like they always ask me this question um, when they're they're on a team at work and you know you can switch teams to work on different problems and they're trying to decide, should I switch teams? Should I stay where I am? Will this affect my career? All those kinds of things. My advice to those people is always that if there's if you're not learning anymore, if there's no one on your team that is better than you that can teach you something in some particular area, then it's probably time to look somewhere else. Uh, I think that in order to constantly be getting personal satisfaction, you need to constantly be learning and pushing yourself. Some of this can be kind of through personal work that, you know, your own personal research and talking to people outside of your company, but also from your peers. It's also very important. It's very important to have a, a set of peers that you're working with as part of your, your work life that you can learn from. Because if everyone is doing garbage and no one knows that this is garbage, then, you know, how are you going to know that garbage is not the norm, right? It's only when you get told that this is hot, a hot mess or hot garbage that you start to think, oh, maybe there's a different way of doing things. And so if you are if you don't have someone to give you feedback or to learn from or to constantly push you forward, then it's, it's probably time for a change. Um, so that's at least my perspective. And that's a piece of advice that I think is very, very helpful to make sure that you're constantly pushing the envelope and keeping yourself moving forward, both in terms of your personal satisfaction, your career. Um, so that is it for my Q&A. Uh, if you enjoyed these types of videos, then please let me know. Feel free to leave a question in the comment section and I'll try to tackle it in the next Q&A. Uh, I like to talk about these career kinds of things or just personal development, personal improvement. Uh, so if you want to ask those kinds of questions, then feel free. Also, you can submit some technical questions. Won't guarantee I'll answer those though. But thanks for your time. And if you enjoyed this, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and I will see you in the next one. Take care.